the line. They work to bring the fries the world over back in the line. This special technique, Desi, we all still hang. This special technique is known as arbitrage. And so important is it in these great commodity markets and also in the security markets and in foreign exchange that you will find a group of traders in these Oh, no. Marty, for Pete's sake, will you shut that fool thing off till I get out of the house? Jesse, shut up. Marty, knock that off! Don't you can yell at me in front of Jesse, Mac McKendall. You've been sore heading around here ever since you came home last... Oh, you poor doll. <laughs> oh, my. Come on. Come on. All right, now. You go into the kitchen, get your milk. Go on. Sorry I yelled at you. You keep getting dressed. I'll take care of this. What's really been bothering you since last night, Mac? You always know, don't you? Well, the only time the Chemlux interviewer can see me before he leaves town is 3.15, and I got this Baldwin guy in my neck for 3 o'clock. Oh, was he the electronics man? No, he was yesterday. Baldwin's the date Mr. Hansen made for me. I got a good notion to skip it. Easy, boy. Plastics and electronics are just dandy for the future. But right now, it's Mr. Hansen's evening job that's paying for your master's degree. Oh, don't forget to drop off his statements on your way to class. Oh, here's your tie and your egg notebook. Well, where's the Hansen file? Under Jesse's pants. Oh, that's the huge. Bye, pr Oh. <laughs> Bye, Prince. Come on, you're gonna be late. Yeah. Here. Your tie. Remember, darling, there's only one thing I want in a job for you. A thousand a month and two bathrooms. Daddy used to call success doing something you do for fun, if you could afford it. Only you get paid for it. And that's the kind of job I want for you. You're a good kid. Well, I promise you one thing. Come graduation, I'll have us out of this cracker box. Yeah, I'm coming! Bye, Daddy! Bye, Daddy! Bye, Princess! Hi, Sam! Mitty! Hi, Marty. We'll see you tonight. Hey, Mac, come on. Now, Smitty, remember, you're going to hold on to the Chemlux interviewer until I brush this Baldwin guy. All right. Uh, Mac? Yes, Sam? Uh, listen to Baldwin. Now, I, I know you're not nuts about his business, but he's already made me a firm offer. And his company might use all three of us. Now, you and Smitty and I have stuck together since Quantico. Let's keep going that way, huh? We'll stick. Morning, Mac. Morning, Mr. Hanson. All finished? I'll let you have to work on it. Oh, not too bad. A little after 12, I guess. <laughs> Near three, I bet. How's the deal look to you? Well, sir, you've got 12 stations now and the farm routes. Adding Herb Wallace's string would be quite a bite. Herb's figures check out okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. Good gallonage and all but the plaza station. Very good lube business, fair TBA, expense ratios all inside the limits. Uh, Mr. Hansen, about my date with Mr. Baldwin this afternoon, would you mind very much if I didn't keep it? Well, that reminds me, uh, Bill Baldwin may invite you to take a trip with him during your spring vacation. Accept it. But, sir, I don't see the... I know, you're worrying about me. One of your friends can fill in here for that week. And take the night off. You've earned it. <laughs> How do you do, sir? Come in and sit down. Thank you. I don't seem to find your personal data sheet, McKennell. Didn't you fill one out? Well, to be frank, Mr. Baldwin, it would just be wasting my time and yours. I don't know why Mr. Hansen made the date. Maybe you better take a look at this. He really figures you're a guy with a future, and he'd like you to have it in the oil business, with Citadel. This is nice of him. Then what's the block? Well, you know from Mr. Hansen, I'm older than most of these kids you've been interviewing this week. At my age, with a wife and youngster, I can't fool around. Got to get out of my way. You're describing me a few years ago. Only I had three kids. Well, then you know why I'm not your boy. No, I don't. Now, your friend Sam has the same problem, but he leans our way. 
What's your beef against the oil business? You think we're a big monopoly run by a few old pirates? Oh, it's none of that election time stuff. No, it's... Well, it's, it's a little like Mr. Hansen. He's a successful man. He's a good man. You're in a good business. The trouble is, it's been a good business too long for what I need. It's old. It's got it made. Now, I've got to get in a new business, one with its future ahead of it. I want a young business. Well, I... Uh, sit down. But I got a 3.15 appointment down the hall. Would you walk out on a date Mr. Hansen made for you? Look, McCandle, can't you realize the very fact the oil industry's 100 years old is what lets it work like a young one? Sure, we were started by a few strong-minded individuals. Lucky for us, lucky for the country that benefits by what they started. But those old strong men are long gone. Today, we're not owned by a few families. We're owned by millions of stockholders, and we're run by professional managers, a skilled management team. And believe me, they work young. They have to. Tell me, just what do you call young? Well, young is... Young, I <laughs> thought. So you can do better than that. Do you mean young as inexperienced, wet behind the ears, insecure? Oh, is it a matter of age, years? Yeah. Well, the Pilgrims landed at Plymouth over 300 years ago, but you wouldn't call the United States a young country? Oh, I come now. Now, country. look, you admit the country's young. And you're young. Now, you ought to be able to think it through and figure out just what youth really is. What does it do? What are its traits? Well, to begin with, wouldn't you say that youth gets new ideas, dreams big? But, sir, he'll brush the other guy off in a couple of minutes. You're the one he really wants to see. You tell him he has the same invitation you have. Come out to our home office for a talk. Goodbye. But he might not be able to get out there for a couple of weeks. Well, that's it, Mac. And if oil doesn't fill the specifications for a young and growing business, I'll drink the product gallon by gallon. I gotta keep telling you, Mr. Baldwin, I've made up my mind. I close mine, huh? You call that young? Mac, I'll be frank with you. We're not as free with job offers as we used to be. But you're a chemical engineer with a master's in business ad coming up well up in your class. And some business experience, too. And we'll probably want you. Now, I'm making a trip around the company in the next couple of weeks. We're looking into switching over our accounting to electronic computers. Almost everything I've told you about, I can show you. How about driving around the run with me? Hey, Mac. Yes, Smitty. Hey, the Kemlitz guy got a telegram. If you hurry, you might just catch him. Oh, yeah? Uh, well, I'll let you know, sir. Goodbye. Now then, Mr. Baldwin, what's your company's group insurance and retirement plan? How about vacations? And what's your starting salary and automatic promotion schedule? <laughs> Last year's exam had three questions on the tax aspects of research and development. We better check on them. <laughs> Hi, fellas. Meet the big winners. Shirley will never learn. She doubled Marty on a small slam again. <laughs> 24 cents. And on the way home, Joni and I figured out what's wrong with these job-seeing tours you're going to make. Mm-hmm. Uh Uh-huh. You boys still want to stick together, don't you? Oh, honey, you know that. Well, all right. You know what? Each of you ought to look into a business he doesn't like. Then maybe he'll bring back an honest report. Sam likes oil, so he ought to visit electronics. Smitty takes plastics, and you... Oh, and I take oil? Yeah. Uh oh, oh. Now listen, Chick. If you think I'm going to waste a week perambulating around a business I'm not going into, then you just don't know who wears the pants in this family. <laughs> Flight 121, limousine service to downtown, now loading at south entrance. Limousine service. Set your coat, Mac. We've got a lot of ground to cover this coming week. We may as well start comfortable. It's going to be pretty humid down in the swamp. What are you auditing in a swamp, turtles? <laughs> a seismic exploration crew. They go where the oil is. Or where they hope it is. Come to think of it, that's one of those attributes of youth I mentioned when we were talking up at school. Hope. Looking forward instead of back. And the oil business, my friend, is built on hope. Mac, what's the youngest thing you can think of right now? If it's space travel, 
Oil researchers are up to their slide rules in it because the new information they'll get from the satellites about the Earth's gravity will be vital to the oil explorers. And they are explorers, just as much as Columbus and Cabrillo and Admiral Byrd. Except these men discover not what's on the Earth, but what's under it. Oil is where you find it, they say. You find it in some very unhandy, though sometimes strangely beautiful places. A long way now from those gentle Pennsylvania hills where the industry began. Matt Lannan is a long way from a mahogany desk and push buttons, but he's the local member of that skilled young management team and he's good at his job. This far from home base, he'd better be. An interesting thing about the oil business, just about every job is skilled. It takes a man or woman with a good head. And what they'll do here is drill a pattern of shallow holes in which they'll plant small dynamite charges. They run cables out from the observer's boat, the recording center, to strings of carefully located geophones microphones, that is, extraordinarily sensitive, each with its own circuit, back to the recorder. The shock waves from these dynamite charges will go deep into the earth. And when they hit the different rock strata, echoes will bounce back up to those microphones on the surface, and their impulses will be recorded to be interpreted and converted to maps of this underground world where oil may later be found. To oil men, this is all old stuff now, just a routine tool. But the uranium hunter poking around the surface with his Geiger counter isn't even close to what these fellows are doing. Now, scientific oil exploration is fairly recent, so naturally it works young. But we've been drilling for oil over a hundred years, and that's one end of the business where you might expect us to be stodgy and set in our ways. But, Mac, what do you see out there? Don't you see a challenge? Well, imagine you're on the management team of an oil company. The geologists have told you that the oil-bearing structures near the shoreline keep on going, right out under the water. All right, how are you going to drill for it, out where you can't even see land? Now look up ahead. Well, if another characteristic of you is that it dreams big, you can't get much younger or bigger than this. Yes, it's big, because it has to be to do its job which is bringing liquid energy up out of the earth to a couple of hundred million people that'll want to have it available when and where they need it. You want to see another over-the-horizon idea? Deviation drilling, they call it. They'll bottom out several holes from this one platform. And the money they'll save in not moving these big rigs will help keep down the cost of your gasoline. But it's a funny thing, in all this bigness, a man doesn't seem to get lost. You take these fellows, now they're you a few years from now. They're in charge of this whole area, responsible for scores of lives and millions of dollars. And does any one of them look lost? And another thing about youth, it's willing to think, you know, to think way out in the blue where there's no past work to copy, to really create. Look down there. Somebody was young enough to think out in the blue, a lot of somebodies. Just about every company in the business is big enough to risk the hefty investment and incidentally, to wait a goodly number of years to get their money back, even if they win. Well, let's get back on wheels. Take a look at a different kind of drilling. About as different as you can get. Mac, look over there. You see another attribute of youth? Well, if that Derek is young, I'm my own great-grandfather. Uh, look beyond the Derek. Look to the spirit behind it. And what you really see is independence. For every big company operation, there are a thousand or two little outfits like this, shooting the works on some geology, a hunch, and a mortgage. All of them independent as hogs on ice. Trying to buck the big companies like yours? Uh, each of us needs the other. Our refineries need more crude than our own wells produce. This fellow Jasper will be happy to have us as a customer when he hits, if he hits. Frank Jasper, I can guess what's going on over at that rig without even moving out of the car. Frank has been a driller for us off and on. He and his wife saved some money, a few dollars at a time, bought this second-hand rig on a shoestring. He's been on this lease maybe three weeks, and the money's running short. He's probably about 2,500 feet down, with maybe 500 more to go to where he thinks he'll hit the oil-bearing sand he's after. Right now, a $150 drill bit has come up out of the hole, worn to a dull nub. Another $150 drill bit is on the end of the string, and it may come up out of the hole, worn to a dull nub, after making just 20, 25 feet of hole in an eight-hour tower. Doesn't look much like that big rig offshore, does it? But it works. It's brought up a lot of oil in its time. It's 
brought up a lot of dust, too. Mrs. Jasper knows the balance in that checkbook down to the penny, and just about how long it'll last. The crew knows the money's running out, but then it always is on these jobs. But somehow, Frank makes it week by week and gets closer down to the pay sand he bets is down there. Maybe he'll make it this time. Maybe not. Maybe next month his driller will be an independent. Who knows which way the ball will roll. There's a limestone outcrop over in the Velos Basin that Frank's been wanting to spud a drill into for the last 10 years. And one of these days, he'll do it. And if he hits that one, too, he might just be on his way. And we better be on ours. This old field was a good producer for a lot of years. Now the tired old wells are down to where we check the oil income month by month against the power bill to see if it's profitable to keep on pumping. But things are looking up for a lot of old fields like this one. Worn out fields, the oil supposedly exhausted, are being brought back to youth. Petroleum engineers call it secondary recovery. Water flooding and gas pressure you've heard about, but one of the newest notions is being pioneered by researchers who are young enough to think they can set the world on fire. And in their way, they can do just that. Thermal recovery, they call it. It's showing a lot of promise, particularly with some of the heavy, sticky crews where there are still two or three barrels of oil left down on the ground for every barrel that was pushed up or pumped up. What these fellas do is take a heavy volume of compressed air and pump it down an injection well into that played out oil sand. Then they ignite the oil oxygen mix. And down there in the porous rock, some of the sticky oil droplets begin to burn. As you can see in their model, the heat travels ahead of the small burning zone and converts the sticky oil droplets into gas and into oil light enough to flow, plus some steam from the trapped water. The gas and oil travel through the porous rock stratum to a point where they can escape through one of the producing wells. And up it comes, pushed up by a gas drive as though the field were in the first flush of youth, putting a lot of oil that never would have been of any use to anybody into the tanks and pipelines. When you ride one of the pipeline inspection planes, you'll see another proof of industrial youth. Name me another private industry that's had the youthful vigor to create a whole national, international transportation that run its own hook without subsidy. Before long, there will probably be more miles of pipeline in the United States than railroad tracks. And this system and the seagoing tankers have helped a lot to keep the prices of petroleum products from rising as fast as most other things you buy. And did you ever stop to think what's the really fundamental character trait of an oil refinery? Well, it's another of those attributes of youth, adaptability. The ability to adjust to new situations as conditions change. And in our business, they're changing all the time. Today, with catalytic crackers, reformers, and other units, the refinery operators and managers can make the crudes give up not just the components that nature put into them, but pretty nearly whatever mix the customer wants us to take out. More heating oil in the wintertime, more gasoline in the touring season. The cars and their engines keep changing year by year. The oil refineries had to adapt to these new cars long before the changes went into production, years before. So the new gasoline would be in the service station tanks nationwide on the day the new cars rolled out of the showrooms. But for today's cars, we make our changes week by week, sometimes day by day. The gasoline you buy in a streak of chilly weather is blended a lot differently from the fuel a station will pump into your tank during a hot spell. And this is just today's adaptability. Research laboratories all over the oil industry are pumping streams of tomorrow's products through their pilot plants, using radioactive isotopes and nuclear accelerators and magic brains, finding new ways of using waste products and byproducts for useful things, needed things. You know, Mac, it's a good feeling to be in a business where people need you. Reminds me we need a little of the product ourselves. Sir, fill her up? Yeah, please. You know, Mac, the real fountain of youth in any business when you come right down to it is ambition. Wanting something and getting a kick out of working for it. Willing to get in there and compete. Now, this last week, you've seen it all over the operation. Sir, your oil's a little low. You want to try the new gold seal? No kidding, I put it in my own car last week, and I could tell the difference in the first 20 miles. OK. You see what I mean? We don't just have ambition. We work out some new ways of satisfying it. 
Say, who's your boss? My wife, but I run the station. Something I can do for you? Just curious. Well, this fellow's probably not any older than you are, but he's independent in business for himself and on a pretty good scale. So here's a really young idea in practical economics. The oil companies have worked out a way to let thousands of ambitious, live young fellows like this lad set up in business for themselves while they're still young. With not much capital, but a lot of ambition and ability and good faith. He's independent, makes more money. We get the finest type of man and make more profit. It's a deal where both sides win. Now, that really is something new under the sun. Yeah? You know, Mac, I've really enjoyed having you with me this week. I'm sorry to see you go. I've enjoyed it too, Bill. You know that. All I hope is that you've really gotten it into your head that the business doesn't have to be new to be young. Now, this one works young. You've seen that. It's wide open to new ideas. And it has the courage to tackle really big jobs and the stamina to carry them through. It's decent and responsible. But it's aggressive and competitive and ambitious. And everywhere you've been, you've seen the pioneering yen for independence. It's your kind of business, Mac. You'd be happy in it. You're a good salesman, Bill. Good enough? We're not offering jobs to every graduate these days, you know. Now, look, I told you frankly before I came down here that... I know. You said you had a closed mind. But think this over on the plane home. Would you enjoy those other businesses as much as what you've seen of this one? Figure it this way. If you didn't have to earn a living, which job would you like to work at just for pleasure and satisfaction? <laughs> now you sound like Marty. A smart girl, Marty. Think it over. Now, we better get you on that yeah. plane. <laughs> Your future in oil. Ah, uh, don't let them kid you, boy. What they mean is no future in oil. Ah, forget about those stick-in-the-mud old industries. Get into something new. Something new? People figure that chemicals are a new industry. But do you realize that a quarter of all chemicals used in the United States today come from petroleum? How about the new words in our language? Cyclopane, urethane, polyethylene. A dozen kinds of synthetic rubber, nylon, the new non-woven fabrics and films. You don't know what's going on. Look, son. There's just one deal for a young fella like you today, and that's the atom. Get with the new thing, boy. Get with the atom. The atom? Space travel? We'll be making new fuels for the rockets, new lubes that'll stand up against radiation. And let your imagination rove on the thousands, literally thousands, of new things for new and wonderful uses that'll be coming into being when the oil researchers start experimenting with radiation on existing petroleum products. Mac, it can start a whole new world. Are your seatbelts fastened? We'll be landing in about five minutes. Well, it was real nice meeting you. We had a real good talk. Oh, and son, don't forget what I told you. Get with it. Get with the new thing. The thing with its future ahead of it. Get with the atom. Thanks. Uh, by the way, sir, what uh, business are you in? Pickles. <laughs> Really nice of you to come out and meet me this late, Mr. Hanson. How'd you get along with the Citadel people? Oh, fine, I guess. Uh, Smitty, Bill I... Baldwin's a fine young fellow, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, fine. Smitty, how did you make out with the electronics people? Well, Mac, I didn't go out there. You what? I've been trying to tell you ever since you landed. Well, what about Sam? He saw the plastics outfit all right. But he still likes oil. I could use them myself because uh, Herb Wallace took up my offer. You're kidding. Eleven news stations and all his heating oil routes. Wow. Well, isn't that a little ambitious? You mean, uh, at my age? Well, I'll give you one thing, Mr. Hanson. The way you run it, this is a young business. They say you're as young as you feel. I say you're as young as you think. The fellow I first went to work for in the oil business, old Clarence Stratmeyer, on his 90th birthday, went downtown and bought a two-pants suit. You know something? He wore it out.
Hi, honey. Hi, dear. How's my girl? Wonderful. Hello, Smitty. Can't you come in a minute, Mr. Hanson? Coffee's on. Will do. Honey, there's a special delivery for you from... It's from the electronics man you saw before you left. They really want you out there. Well, which job do you really want me to take? I told you. Not so I could hear it. The job you'd do for fun if you could afford it. Only you get paid for it. Uh, you still haven't answered my question. I'm back. Telephone. Long distance. Say, before you talked to this guy, what did you think about Bill Baldwin's company? Who's on the phone? Well, the electronics man says he'll call. Mac, before you talk to him, what about Baldwin? Well, I guess Genius is still bucking for the world of tomorrow electro space suit. Hello, McCandle speaking. Mac, this is Bill, Bill Baldwin. Well, hello, Bill. You got a trip? Yeah, now I'm wondering about the pickle business. Huh? Honey, before you do anything final... Mac, I got home to find I'm scheduled in for a series of meetings all this week. So if you decide to come with Citadel, will you phone my assistant, Dave Bowen? You met him. Uh-huh. But you've got a firm offer, Mac. So that's what you wanted. It's a real opportunity to grow with a business. I forget I'm with Citadel, just as a friend. I hope you change your mind. Bill, I can't. Mac, you ought to at least think it over. Didn't you read the brochure I gave you at the airport? Sam, Smitty, do we still stick together? Will you settle for Citadel? I've been trying... I'll sell you. Uh, Bill? Now, look, don't ask me to change my mind. Because I just made it up a little while ago to take your offer. And thanks. I'll write you tomorrow. Goodbye. What's with you, pal? What were you mumbling about when I said we were going in the oil business? Because I'm already in it. What? Helen wants me to come back next year and get my masters like you and Sam. So I'm picking up your old job with Mr. Hanson. Hey. With the new stations, could be a real door opener. Well, now let's have our coffee. Let's go, Smitty. Yeah. Honey, I think it's wonderful and I know you're right. But what finally made up your mind? Mm, a lot of things. But what was the final one? Mr. Hanson, I guess. Mr. Hanson? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I'd like to be around the oil business 30 years from now when Mr. Hanson buys his two-pants suit. <laughs> Come on, doll, let's eat. 